Hey, this is Travis. Today we're going to go over BitTensor subnet number 54, Yana's Mid, a subnet focused on preventing financial crimes. And before we start, none of this is financial advice. So banks and other financial institutions are required by regulators to test their anti-money laundering systems and their fraud detecting systems. Deficient anti-money laundering programs have led to $321 billion in company fines over the last 15 years. So to make sure that their systems are compliant, companies hire independent testing to verify that they have robust anti-money laundering programs. This compliance costs approximately $61 billion per year across the United States and Canada alone. So to meet compliance, testing firms like Yanez create thousands of fake identities and throw them at their customers' systems. This helps identify holes in their anti-money laundering programs and their fraud detection. These identities can consist of names, locations, IP, biometric data, etc. Now companies can generate their own fake identities internally to test their systems, but it isn't the specialty of these financial institutions. It's very often slow manual work and it takes developer time away from other projects. And since it's internal, it's unlikely to catch every hole. So the Yana's MID subnet, MID stands for Multimodal Inorganic Identity Dataset, is currently relatively small and focused on creating name variations before expanding to other identifying attributes. Now this is oversimplified, but companies will get a list of sanctioned individuals. Let's say one of them is called Bernie Madoff. So you might have someone create an account under Burn Madorf, and maybe that should be reviewed by the institution before they can withdraw large sums of money. The Yana's Mid subnet tests financial institutions as fraud and anti-money laundering programs using these identities. So how does the subnet actually work? Miners are responsible for generating a variety of identities to be used to test customer anti-money laundering systems. This data generated by the miners is then gathered by validators and then used to test those systems. So let's dig into the incentive mechanism to understand how miners are rewarded. At the time of this video, miners are rewarded based on the following. First, the responsiveness of the miner, and then second, quantity, so that's the number of name variations provided up to a limit. Thirdly, the quality. So this is the uniqueness and similarity of responses to the original names. So you might have some names with phonetic similarity, which is similar to how they sound, and then orthographic similarity, which is similar to how the names look. So you can see that the subnet here is incentivizing high variance between names and high responsiveness. Now this incentive mechanism will certainly be added to and updated as they add more types of identity data for miners to generate. So software engineers from anywhere and everywhere in the world compete to provide the most variable data sets to Yanis. Now at the time of this recording, top miners on the subnet are making around $20 per day from emissions or 0 0.06 tau. This of course will fluctuate as their incentive mechanism changes. Now looking ahead at the roadmap, first they're looking at allowing miners to propose threat scenarios and then evaluate and reward those miners based on those scenarios. Then they're going to look at location obfuscation via IP region and geographic manipulation, and then open the subnet up for use outside Yanis, like institutions that want to use the data for themselves. Now, I think when they do this, this will be great because manually testing and creating identities is time consuming, and Yanis's automation here will be a nice time saver. That said, they already have multi year contracts secured today with global financial organizations. And then they'll be adding biometric data and then generating and validating synthetic documents. And then in the very long term, they'll have 3D identity avatars and voice and conversational AI. Now on the team, we have Jose Caldera, Bin Tang, and Asim Othman. Now this team has a wealth of experience building companies and products in the financial crime prevention market. As for my personal thoughts on the subnet, I'm looking forward to when they're able to make the subnet usable, not just by their company, Yana's Compliance. I think once this happens, it'll multiply the value in the subnet. Now, please understand that this is not financial advice and valuations within BitTensor are tricky and not as straightforward as purchasing stocks.